Welcome to the third episode of Opportunity Canada, Critical Minerals, a series made in partnership between custom content from the Wall Street Journal and Invest in Canada. I'm your host, Sarah Chazen, an executive editor from the Trust at the Wall Street Journal Barron's Group, and I'm thrilled to be here to dive deeper into the supply chain around Canada's critical minerals mining ecosystem. Today, I'm joined by Candice McGibbon, a mining expert who has spent over 25 years in the sector and capital markets. She will assume the position of president of the Canadian Institute of Mining, Metallurgy and Petroleum in 2025 through 2026. Thank you for joining us today, Candice. My pleasure, my pleasure, thanks for having me. So across our earlier episodes, we've heard clearly about Canada's critical mineral advantage. But with resources, incentives and expertise in place, Many investors are looking at connecting the dots to develop entire supply chains around, for example, electric vehicles. So today we're going to explore how investors can benefit from supply chain adjacent to mining and the importance of sustainability there. Let's kick things off by understanding why it is so important to build critical mineral supply chains and also how specifically Canada stands out globally um, in terms of the potential for sustainable supply chains. Well, sustainable is Canada's forte. We have one of the best reputations in the world for miners to, with what we've done historically, with our operating, with our, with our wonderful professionals who really do know how to do things right. And so uh, just fundamental as a baseline for the Canadian mining industry is sustainability. As we move to a net zero economy and as we build these supply chains for EVs and for electrification and for green energy, we're all working under the sustainability pledge, but how we do it on a day-to-day -day basis and how we treat our employees and how we treat the environment is critical to us moving forward properly so that not only we have the license to operate in the areas where we operate, but we also have the political license. We also have the investor license because investors and politicians and voters are looking to companies to be that corporate citizen who does things sustainably. If you're not a corporation who is doing sustainability correct these days, you won't get the funding, you won't get the permits, you won't, you won't have that opportunity, which is good. That is a great place to be, it's where we should start and then build upon how we do things better. In Canada, we have the infrastructure, we've got the schools, we've got the talent. Schools have in recent years really experienced a decline in enrollment in mining and I think this vertical integration conversation that we're having today is really critical because it highlights to the general public why we need mining. I can imagine, and to, to take that, that position in the mining industry and feel like you're, you're sort of pull, pushing the needle forward for, in the sustainability conversation is something I think the younger generation probably wants to have ownership of. Absolutely. So if the industry is being sustainable, if it's going to be part of the solution with regards to moving towards that net zero commitment in 2050, then young people are saying, okay, I want to be part of that. It's exciting. And there are more opportunities and very diverse and innovative ways one can get involved as we move forward. So you have a really unique vantage point um, based on your background and what you're doing right now. I would love to hear from your POV, how is critical mineral supply chain evolving and how is this creating new opportunities for investors in Canada? So there are so many different facets of this new opportunity that we have within Canada. We've got the exploration, the lithium mine, the potential lithium mine, chromium, all of these types of things, nickel, copper, cobalt. And then we've got all of the green energy. So your wind, your solar, we've got the innovation with regards to carbon capture and removal. And because we have such a resource rich history, we have to capture our carbon. We need about six times as much minerals in an electric vehicle than we do a standard car. We need 13 times as much mineral resources in a, in a renewable facility, so like a wind farm or a solar farm, than we do a traditional gas plant. So while we are greening our energy, we need the materials. And so this means, this is why we're having this conversation, because regulators, policymakers, want us to move towards a carbon neutral economy, which is net zero, in 2050 is our target. And to do that, Canada can play a role because of our unique infrastructure and our historic background and resources. From an investment standpoint, all of those pieces which I mentioned are going to need capital. And the capital, of course, comes from savvy investors who may be abroad 
And historically, Canada has had 40% of the publicly traded mining companies in the world listed on our TSX and TSXV. There's, in 2022, there was over 1,150 companies listed here. The infrastructure is fantastic. Our lawyers, our financiers, our, everyone associated with financing mining companies and others and energy, so we're ready, we're poised. And so we're looking to attract, of course, those investors here because we've got the infrastructure, we've got the minerals. We need, ourselves in Canada, need to connect the dots on how to extract those minerals quickly and get them to the, to the markets that we need. I mean, because the need is just growing and growing and growing. The need is growing, it's staggering how much, like lithium demand needs to increase tenfold. Which is good news because it does, does you know, sort of prompt, lead to a promise of a greener future, especially when, you know, the the mining that is, you know, producing this lithium is also on board with this sort of idea of sustainability. Well, that's just it. And the world, when the Ukraine war happened and Russia was cut off from some of the supply chains, the world really realized our reliance on others. Now the world has shifted and the geopolitical nature of our conflicts means that world leaders are literally looking towards stable democracies with a complete supply chain. And that's why global leaders are having this conversation on, we don't only just need the mines, we need the battery plants, we need the EV plants, so that our supply chain to supply those two countries that have stable democracies and within the confines of, of trade agreements and such, so that we have supply to our EVs ultimately to be able to meet our commitments. We're seeing so-called vertical integration where automotive and technology companies are beginning to invest in or form strategic partnerships with mining companies. How does this approach benefit investors? It's so I was I've been so pleased to see this, Sarah, because what it means is that investors are going to have access to a much larger pool of capital. The investment by OEMs and the vertical integration, these companies are so much bigger than anything we could ever dream of as far as the exploration companies and those that ultimately end up developing the mines. And we have big mining companies, but not to the tune of hundreds of billions or trillions of dollars of a market cap. And so access for these companies to our critical minerals brings us to the stage, brings us to the world stage. And just to highlight a few of the pivotal transactions that have happened over the past years, which has really caused a, a really nice ripple effect into our ecosystem. Uh, Volkswagen, Norfolk, Umicore, Nexstar, Nexstar being a partnership between Stellantis and LG Energy are all investing in very, very large capital projects for batteries, for, for EVs. And it, recently, GM and Samsung have made investments into either, in GM's case, the securing of raw materials for their vehicles with Valet, which is a major metals producer in the world, and Samsung recently into Canada Nickel. To be able to you know, create your business strategy and your roadmap for the next 20 years, to, to be able to say concretely, okay, I know where this major you know, part of the equation is coming from, it, I mean, it must give them such peace of mind to know that it's, you know, stable and they have like a very, you know, secure pipeline That's set right. up for them. Yeah. That's right. And the, the industry, as far as mining goes, is plagued with permit delays. Having a streamlined process, having regulators that understand this, these are the really important things. I mean, consulting with indigenous peoples, first and foremost understanding that the environmental regulations are strict and that we will adhere to them is important. However, I believe that we've, we've got there. So now we just need to ensure that we're sticking to the regulations, that companies understand the rules, that investors understand the rules, that there's stability, and then it's one of those things, if you build it, they will come. come. I was just thinking that same exactly, phrase. Exactly, <laughs> right? And the key, key, key that you'll hear any investor say is stability, stability, stability. You can't change the rules halfway through because you've invested a dollar, and if that dollar is going to go to 50 cents because the rules are changed, they don't like that. What they like is this is what a government says, this is what they're going to do, and this is the support they're they're providing, and I think our government is doing that. We are seeing changes. The Ontario government announced that they're going to be making changes to their Ontario Mining Act to help streamline processes. The Canadian government, the federal government, is looking also towards changes they can make in order to be less cumbersome.
we've talked a little bit about this, but I'm just gonna you know, ask it in a sort of a different way, but what advantages do you see when it comes to vertical integration for investment in Canadian critical minerals specifically? Well, the governments, both federally and provincially, have really doubled down on support for vertical integration with regards to the large announcements for EV and battery plants within Ontario and Quebec, which is a fantastic sign, which means the Canadian government is and its people is committed to building jobs in this sector and is committed to providing capital for people who companies who are willing to locate here. I love the fact that our government is absolutely committed to this and I think it's so important and corporations will see that and as they see that we will attract more. I mean as you're talking and just thinking about all this sort of hinges on having a government that is educated, supportive, prioritizing this sort of thing which it sounds very much like the Canadian government is. That's right and we can't forget about of course my background the miners right the miners need support they need funding we have a lot of issues in the sector which we're going to need to sort out but the great part of this the op the silver lining the optimistic viewpoint is we're now all at the table together we're having the conversation because before it was this is what we do I mean everything we're using today is as a result of mining the microphone the lights the everything you know copper electrifies the world Aluminum, all of it, is a result of the mining industry. And so we just need to understand, and the general public needs to understand, it's so critical to the world. And everybody at the table means we'll do it right. And I, I have to say this because recycling is going to be an absolute key piece of the puzzle as we move forward. Because if we've taken it out of the ground already, we might as well reuse it. Uh, if approaching investment with vertical integration in mind, it might open investments up to those who don't typically consider mining in their portfolios. So is this something you've noticed? And if so, what can be done to broaden the range of investors into critical mineral supply chains? It's coming. I mean, it's a slow process. What we have to do in the mining business is we have to prove to investors there has to be returns, right? It has to be, there has to be a reason beyond just greening, right, from private capital. Uh, governments are doing this as a policy, as a policy uh, shift and as a policy commitment, which is good. So you're going to have those, those grants and allocation of capital from governments, which isn't necessarily dependent upon returns. But others need to make a profit and stock prices need to go up if it's publicly traded and in private scenarios, then you're going to be looking for some cash flow. This is a new industry. We're looking at returns. We're looking at innovation and all of those types of things. So while there's challenge, there's also opportunity because in new industries, that's where kind of first in, you're going to have the risky capital, you're going to make the returns. Right. And so all this to say where mining proper probably, as you say, maybe there was a big portion of the investing public who weren't in that necessarily, but this conversation that we're having now means you can't invest in green technology unless you understand where your mining is, where your inputs are coming from and their mine inputs. You can't invest in carbon capture and removal until you've got the mining inputs. And so the total piece of the infrastructure, that circular, circular inputs of the, everything that the world wants to do and where investors may want to put their money means it's all going to come back to do we have the raw materials? Does that company have the supply that they need in order to achieve their objectives? Which is great because I think now what ha is happening is there's a bigger piece of the pie for those investors and they're astute and they will, they will fi find and follow where the opportunities are and I think there's a plethora of those opportunities here in Canada. It's like tales all this time, you know, you, you getting early, the, you see the opportunity that's, that's there and yeah. To the, the, the rewards come to those people who are That's dialed right. in. That's yeah, right. yeah, exactly. So I love uh, ending my interviews with sort of like that future focused crystal ball question. And, you know, you are a perfect person to ask this to based on your background. What do you think is next in the development of stable sector specific supply chains with regards to critical minerals in Canada? And what do you think is needed to make that happen more efficiently? Okay, so there's, there's a few things that we need in order to make that happen. One, we need permit clarity and regulation that the integrators 
can count on. Two, we need access to funding so that we can build these things. I mean, they were talking billions and billions of dollars in investment here. And three, we need a general public who understands that we do need to mine in order to green and that mining is indeed part of the solution and that we need to regulate and we need to hold companies accountable. However, the footprint and, we, and the sustainability of mining is, is sound. And at, w once we get all those three things together, then I really believe that the integration can happen. And I, I'm going to my crystal ball. My crystal ball includes companies like the big tech too. I think Google, Yahoo, all of those companies, Amazon are going to have to get into this integration as well because they have huge infrastructure needs, mm -hmm. huge complex battery requirements that they're going to need to supply in the future. So I think the race will not only be EV companies, I think that hopefully part of the conversation will be those other large players in the tech world and we will get even further in the integration of mining to the general public, which I'm really looking forward to. There's just so much need that you know expands from just like the EV market into like like you said the tech market as well. Well, and think about that transportation, right? When you're looking at Amazon, look at their extensive transportation network, yeah. right? They're going to need clean power. They're going to need clean delivery mechanisms. All of the infrastructure that we have is going to need to be green eventually, which means we need an astronomical increase in the metals the and materials yeah. that goes into that, which is which is where we're going to go and I think ultimately is good for the world. Candace, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thanks for having me, Sarah. Look, I think that we've got a great opportunity here in Canada and I think it's only going to be exciting times as we move forward. And thank you for listening. This has been the final episode in our series, Opportunity Canada, Critical Minerals, a program made in partnership between custom content at the Wall Street Journal and Invest in Canada. If you missed our first two discussions with Laurel Broughton and Pierre Gratton, please make sure to check back and take a listen.